Yo, what's good, everybody? It's your boy, Eddie. Welcome to Transformation 365, starting now. Uh, say I won't. Why y'all scared to be different? Uh, say I won't. Why y'all scared to be different? Huh? Now, as always, I'd like to thank you guys for checking out this week's video. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and you'll be notified about every single new video that we upload. So this week, I wanted to talk about something that was real basic, but also it's not. The reason I say it's basic is because most of us know that in order to live this life as believers, we have to have it. But many of us, we put it into things that aren't necessary, so to speak. Okay, what I'm talking about is faith. Um, the walk of faith, faith walk, all that good stuff. But today, more specifically, we're going to be talking about the object of our faith. Now, I get it. Most of us, we think we have this down pat, right? The object of my faith is obviously the Lord, right? It's obviously the Father. Because how else would I be a believer had I not have faith in the Father God? It's Jesus. We could not have faith without having faith in Jesus. Now, those are the bargain brand answers. Those are the ready-made answers. But the truth of the matter is, is that most of us, when we see how we react to things in life, we see that our faith might be not just in God, but in the things that we thought were going to work out. And the sad thing is, what most people don't realize is that as people, we're just as sturdy or just as stable as the very thing that we have faith in. What that means is, whatever your faith is lying in is as sturdy as you are. So if that changes, then your stability changes. Just like this chair I'm sitting in right now. I'm only really as stable as the chair is that I'm sitting in. If this chair wasn't sturdy, if this chair wasn't stable, then, you know, it'd be highly likely that, that I fall when the chair crumbles. Now, like I said, most of us know what our faith should be in as believers, right? But right now, we're going to take a look at a couple of things that our faith should not be in as believers because we see when these things change, so do we. Now, the first thing is the most obvious thing, but the thing that we put our faith in all of the time. And that's people. Listen, buddy, people will change on you at the drop of a hat. And when those people change, when those relationships with those people change, we see that our faith was really in those people or in those relationships because we see how how hard we take that as, as it is or as it relates to our own walk and our own um, stability. When your boyfriend or your girlfriend leaves you, when your family members are talking bad about you behind your back, but it's in front of your face because you hear it and you know what they're saying, but you wanted you just, mm. When your friends turn on you or flake out on you or stuff like that. When the people that you felt had your back no longer have your back and that's, that relationship and that paradigm changes. Boo! Now, the Bible says in the 118th Psalm, the 8th verse, that it's better to put your trust in God than in the confidence of men. Now, the 17th chapter of Jeremiah says it like this. Cursed is the man that put his trust in man and makes the uh, flesh his strength. And the 146th Psalm says this. Do not put your trust in princes, nor in the son of man. Now, all of these scriptures talk about putting our confidence in God as opposed to people, because like I said, those relationships with people can change. People change all the time. But when our faith is rooted and grounded in the Lord, yes, if that relationship changes, it will affect us. However, it won't change us because our faith is now in the one who doesn't change. The second thing our faith shouldn't be in is in our situations. Much like with people, our situations can change as well. If our faith wasn't supposed to be in our situations, then James couldn't say this. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials and tests, knowing this, that the testing of your faith work in patience, but let per patience have its perfect work in you, that you may be perfect, mature, lacking nothing. If we're supposed to count it all joy in the midst of all types of situations and circumstances, how can I do that 
when my faith is in my situation is not to change. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says this, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Jesus is giving the disciples examples of things that we often put our trust in, but then he tells them to no longer seek those things because we seek those things out of priority, but now place our priority, our principal priority, in seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things that we want anyway will be added unto us. However, when our circumstances change, when we lose that job, when we get evicted out of that apartment, when that car is repossessed and we have to get back on the bus, when the illness takes place and we no longer have the means to provide the way we did because now we have to put all of our money into trying to pay off of those bills from that debt, now we can no longer live the way that we used to, that can affect our confidence, that can affect our minds, that can affect our spirits. But God wants us to let our trust rest in Him so that those things that change don't change us. The last thing I want to talk to you about not putting your confidence is, is in the miracles of God. Now hold on, buddy. You're talking about not putting your confidence in people and in situations. You talk about the miracles of God. Don't that mean not putting your confidence in God? Hold up, Jim Shoe. Let me explain. Sometimes we put our faith in the miracles of God, expecting a move of God on our behalf through our prayer. But what if it don't happen? What if you pray for your family members healing, yet they still passed? What if you've been believing God for this job opportunity so that your lights don't get cut out? You're, you don't get kicked out of your apartment with your family. You don't lose your house, but it doesn't come through. You've been praying for a mighty move of God, but that mighty move of God doesn't happen. And now you're sitting there holding the bag. In John chapter 6, you see an example of this. When Jesus fed the thousands and then those people began to follow him, Jesus turned around and said, you guys aren't following me because you love me or you're trying to seek the revelations that I have. You guys are following me simply because I fed you with these fishes and these loaves. Then he turned and said something that was really hard to them for them to receive and many of them left him. He said that anybody that wants to come after me must eat of my flesh and drink of my blood or else you're not worthy of me. And the Bible says that a great multitude of people left him that day. Now, imagine you a pastor and you pastoring about a good four, five, seven thousand folks and, and, and everything's going well. Then you say something real hard from the pulpit one day. One thing that's biblically sound, but all everybody leaves you but 12 folks. How would that make you feel? That's exactly what happened to Jesus. They left him simply because they were following him for his miracles not following him because of who he is. So we have to understand that even when those things don't happen the way that we want them to happen, will that change who we are? Will that change our relationship and our view of God? Or will we begin or will we continue to walk with the Lord even though those situations, those people, those circumstances have have changed up on us? Like I said earlier, in the first chapter of James, James tells us to count it all joy when things flip up and switch up on us. And why? Because our God is always consistent and always the same. Hebrews chapter 13 verses 8 and 9 says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So what that means is our faith in him, our faith in the Lord, leads us to the most stable place that we can ever possibly want to be. Seeing that the Lord doesn't change, because our faith is in him, even when situations, circumstances, and people change, we don't change. Having this type of faith in the Lord also keeps us from stumbling. You all might have been in church long enough to see this. Somebody was disappointed in the way things worked out, the folks that left them, the situations that changed, and it caused them to backslide. When your faith is not in things and in people, when those things and people change, you're able to stay consistent and faithful to God. This also course corrects us when it comes to our walk. We're no longer like children, all emotional when things don't go our way, but we're able to stay mature, walking a life submitted and obedient to the Lord. And the truth is, as we see him, the more we begin to dive into the word, the more we begin to uh, devote ourselves to prayer and, and, and submission to the Father as Lord, we begin to become more as he is. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, it speaks to this point. So let's not be so caught up in what changed around us and the people that changed on us. But let us maintain and stay submitted to the one that's the same yesterday, 
today and forevermore. God bless. Thank you guys for checking out this video. As always, if you liked what you see, please feel free to share it and like the video. Also, if you're wanting to know more about what this ministry does, please feel free to check us out on Facebook. I've left a link in the description. Go ahead and click it. Like us on Facebook. You will be updated on every teaching that was posted up on there. Also, if you're in the Chicagoland area, you will be kept up to date on the meetings that we have in the Chicago area if you want to be a part of it. God bless you guys. Uh, say I won't. Why y'all scared to be different? Uh, say I won't. Why y'all scared to be different?